Nicola is going to be joining us online. He's going to be talking about providing a childcare service for your API. Interesting um, uh, title of your presentation there, Nicola. That's true. Thanks, Mark, for that. And yeah, I'm going to explain uh, why actually I chose this title during the course of uh, the talk. Let me, okay, uh, wonderful. The, do you want to get your slides up? Yeah, sharing my screen. Make sure that's going there. Okay. Okay, wonderful. And then we'll just yeah click to present, and I'll jump off. Thanks. Looking forward to hearing you. Thank you. So, uh, hi everyone. I am uh, Nicola Pietrolongo, Amazon Web Services uh, Solutions Architect based in London. And uh, I've got over 20 years of experience in uh, shaping and developing innovative uh, solutions for large enterprises. And today I'm going to talk about uh, providing a childcare service for your API. So, this talk is uh, focused on everything that comes before the API implementation. So the design, the ideation, the experimentation, the thinking process required to drive a success. Everything uh, starts uh, up here in our brain, the most powerful known computer. A human brain possesses about 100 billion neurons with roughly one quadrillion connections uh, known as uh, synapses wiring uh, these uh, cells together. And uh, do you know that at birth, uh, the size of an infant's brain is only 25% of an adult's brain? And incredibly, by age three, the brain of a child has grown to 90% of an adult's brain. So in the first three years, it grows uh, a bit more than three times in size. This makes uh, the initial part of a child's life an amazing opportunity for uh, parents and other caregivers to shape the child's growth and form uh, healthy habits that will last a lifetime. So I can see that some of you might be confused. And uh, if you are a late camera, you might wonder uh, if this is the right session. And uh, yes, it is. I'm talking about the importance of the initial design process. So as children can be affected by what they experienced uh, in early life, so the destiny of your API depends on the steps you take at the beginning. You need to consider an API as a long-term uh, project that continues to provide a strategic value in the future. In other words, you need to get the foundation right. Does this mean uh, spending weeks in planning before your first uh, production release? No, it doesn't. I'm suggesting to think long term and so to change the mindset, to think uh, deeply and challenge your beliefs. Let's see how to make this happen. So here is a series of principles uh, you should take in consideration while you architect uh, your API. So the API needs to be extensible and uh, loosely coupled. So internal structure and data flow are minimally or not affected by new or modified functionality. The API should be versatile, capable to adapt to different purposes, at least in the initial phase. This statement will be clearer uh, later in the, in the talk. The API also needs to be optimized. So the components needs to operate at or above the user expectation. And uh, of course, the API should be long living, so provide long-term value at scale and able to meet uh, changing customer needs. This is in contrast to approaching API as one time project. And finally, uh, I mean, next, uh, the API needs to be verbose. In IT, verbose uh, is the ability to provide additional details uh, to understand what the system is doing. So extensive visibility for the business as providing uh, business and technical metrics with uh, logging and monitoring or dashboard, but also visibility for the customer as well. Think about uh, error handling or API consumption limits. And uh, at the end, the API needs to be easy to consume, build upon standards, well documented, easy to integrate. As you can see, we can summarize uh, all those uh, principles in one word evolve. Evolution has to grow and adapt to changes. So, where to start? What are the steps uh, to get there? What's right and what's wrong? Um, you might want to start uh, gathering uh, project requirements. Well, 
This is the wrong approach as limits the API's extensibility. For instance, if you start implementing uh, from requirements as uh, let's use this technology or that specific delivery method, you are going to narrow the scope and you won't be able to meet new use cases. Instead, you should start from your customer, understand what they really want and how their needs could evolve in the future. Let me clarify the importance of the scope and customer needs uh, with uh, this example. Let's imagine you work for an e-commerce uh, in Paris and your task is uh, to design an API to provide a product's name and a product's price. Looks easy. You wire up some uh, data source, use your framework of choice, and you write something uh, that returns this response. Name, master toaster, 3000. Total price, 24 euros. Who knows, might become the best Christmas gift easier. As you can see, the response uh, looks already a bit strange. I've made this uh, example simple and uh, bad to appreciate more what uh, good looks like. You can see that uh, in the response at the right, we have a better naming convention and a better structure. Item name, item price, item tax. Even, in, even uh, if uh, this e-commerce operates at national level, this structure on the right allows the business to support multiple currencies in the future. So to summarize, you can easily understand that uh, the amount of work to produce these two results is probably the same. So same effort, but completely different outcome. Let's talk in detail about strategy and evolution. The previous example was not designed to satisfy every possible scenario. In fact, we should not code for the future, but we should be open to accepting the future. Let's say you need to support multiple markets, uh, like multiple customer base or multiple use cases. You start from a basic uh, value proposition, minimal requirement, an MVP, extensible, the system over time will evolve. And so you will face two choices. Continuously support multiple markets at the same time or have a single systems for specific markets. You can understand that from this diagram that if you use the horizontal strategy at your left, you're going to have a coupled structure can lead to a big monolithic architecture causing uh, integration, deployment, or resource constrictions problem. This doesn't happen with a vertical strategy on the right, which is more lean and independent. To make this point clearer, let's see a practical uh, example, a little bit more low level. Back into the e-commerce uh, website, let's say you need to define a web API for a product page. When you shop online, you notice that the same product is available in various sizes, colors, materials, and price points. These options are called product variants. So the master toaster product page should show a default image in high resolution and give the ability to select all other variants. In our case, the green version of the master toaster with a different price. So how would you architect your API strategy for this use case? Default IRS image and the ability to choose between other variants. You might want to have one single web API that loads all the variants in advance, including all high resolution images and show hide elements in the front end application. But the better approach is to have two APIs. A product API that returns one default item with price and thumbnails for variants and a second API that returns specific variant informations as image and price. In this way, one API can evolve independently to another, supporting more use cases, and also have a different operation model. Let me give you an example. In future, you might be able to know in advance the customer preferences. You might have a recommendation engine, or the customer simply tells you that prefers the green color. So you can change the product API to deliver the preferred item as the default one instead of the default one, or leaving, and so leaving the product variant API same as before, so they can evolve independently. So how to choose what's right? How to build in the right way from the beginning? The first rule is to set up a framework that includes four stages. Listen, learn, build, and measure.
Let's see them uh, one by one in detail. When you listen to your customer, you'll be able to understand their real needs and so improve your products and services. You should engage with your customers, customers also uh, in the meaning of consumers, on their preferred channels. Have the ability to record feedback in a structured way so you can analyze them uh, later on. You should focus on the customer as well as the problem. Why your customers are telling you that? What, what they try to achieve? You should leverage direct feedback as asking specific questions to customer as indirect feedback, as analyzing data from log, investigating what kinds of calls are being made, why and when. Second stage is learn. Don't be afraid of new things. Validate what you learn against the initial assumption you made. The best part is when you realize that your customers are using your API in a way that you didn't expect. Bringing back to the product, product API example, uh, one customer might want to use uh, that public API you built for its comparison website. So maybe they are scrapping your data. What are you going to do? Are you going to block those calls or embrace that? Perhaps providing a new service. Third stage is build. Break the work into multiple parts and implement them in rapid cycles, managing late changes. And finally, measure, measure and measure from everything technical as error rates, latency, requests, cache performances, and so on. But most importantly, you should define and measure your key performance indicator. Response to question as, uh, what is your desired outcome? Why this outcome matter? How you're going to measure it? You can, you can use uh, smart criteria to evaluate uh, your KPI. So smart as uh, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, uh, time bound. Sometimes uh, the smart uh, criteria assume uh, other form as uh, simple, meaningful, attainable, uh, reasonable, time sensitive. Let me clarify with uh, an example. Let's imagine uh, after various internal discussion, of course, you need to have kind of a center of, of excellence and also involve different uh, uh, stakeholders. You define one API as, uh, uh, one KPI, sorry, as uh, to increase the customer satisfaction by 20% in the next six months. You can understand that is uh, kind of respecting this smart uh, criteria, but how do you measure customer satisfaction? Well, you can run a survey directly with your customers, or you can see how many times a customer repeated their purchase. Again, it's really important to measure the outcome. Moreover, uh, KPI allow you to be focused on what's important, and they help you prioritize between tasks. You can understand by now that these uh, four stages are part of a cyclical uh, system. And you have to complain these uh, initial cycles uh, probably very fast. When you start from scratch, you should prototype your API and have your potential users interact with it if it is uh, the actual API you are building. You don't need to guess what the customer wants with uh, internal question answers. So use a release first and adjust uh, later uh, method. You can simply expose a mock to simulate the final behavior and collect data. Your project will mature uh, over time, opening to new use cases and new opportunities, increasing uh, the customer experience and so the adoption. This will allow you to have more data points and you should use this data point to looking for trends to embrace, blockers you want to remove and behaviors that needs to be simplified. All of this to build a better customer-centric product. By now, you understand how it is important to experiment and fail fast. Since uh, in the early stage, uh, the cost of failure is lower. And so it's critical to encompass uh, the, customer, the customer needs from the beginning of your project. As a final note, back to the initial uh, discussion, about uh, how important, how are important the early stages of a child's life, kids are more likely to improve when we focus on reinforcing what they've done right, rather than punishing what they've done wrong. So 
I would like you to be focused not on failing fast, but on succeed early. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, the the um, we've got a few minutes then that we can have a quick chat. Thanks for um, the presentation. How did this come about? How did you? Uh, what sort of uh, issues were you experiencing, or that we, when you were talking with partners, what weren't they getting that was driving the need for you to map out um, this sort of more strategic approach? Well, I think uh, uh, customers, uh, um, of course, they have a different way to implement a solution and uh, back into the traditional time in which we were more techy focused. Uh, we see that uh, over time, uh, it pays uh, really more uh, when you uh, when your customer uh, is at the center of the stage, so plays the center point in your in your ideation process and also in your design process. But still, I believe uh, customers should do uh, customer. I mean, in, in meaning of uh, different enterprises should do more to put the customer really at the center of the stage. So that's why it's really important to uh, uh, share your uh, thoughts uh, internally uh, in the business, but also listen uh, really what they what your customer, your customer base wants. And uh, I see also developing API, sometimes this is not really straightforward. We sometimes see API as, you know, it's just a pretty pretty technical things that you push out there but we are not really have uh, we don't really have a stronger mechanism to like uh, to like uh, grabbing feedback or things like that and so that's why uh, i would probably reinforce uh, uh, the fact to uh, really um, uh, contact uh, consumers and customers in their preferred channel and not, not only uh, um, make your assumption or your uh, kind of uh, decision based uh, only collecting the data because sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you really need to understand what your customer wants. How do we get past, so even within then API teams, that role that you're talking about is done by the product manager. So there is still that additional filter between the product manager doing that and the rest of the technical team. What what approaches do you use with your teams to bridge that um, that, that, that sort of internal boundary? Because that's like that last mile, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you mean, Mark, and actually it's a good, good point because I, 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 I feel also uh, back in, in, in the day when I was a technical lead as well, uh, yeah, there was kind of a separation of, uh, of uh, let's say, concerns between, uh, you know, business and, and techie guy. But again, those barriers, to be honest, uh, nowadays are really, really thin and there is right. nothing. Uh, nothing uh, wrong to feedback uh, uh, also on a decision and also challenge decision. That was also one of the points that I uh, um, in, insert in my presentation, like try to, to, to kind of uh, um, uh, challenge your beliefs, no? So try to challenge yourself. Don't only push uh, um, uh, in a decision out there just because someone told you so. And that's actually, uh, I also have a, a personal experience about that. I was uh, a kind of part of a team uh, at Act Team a while uh, back uh, back in the days uh, uh, that uh, was supposed to support like an event engine uh, uh, platform and uh, I took over this project and we were uh, uh, about to build a new kind of back-end application for the customers so this customer were able to uh, configure these events and uh, one of the requirements was like to use a specific type of browser because the data was showing that this specific type of browsers were, was the, 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 the most used. But in reality, when I start to dig into the detail, actually customers were, were using that type of browser because the page was not working <laughs> with that type of browser. So I get <laughs> you know, the data is not always uh, kind of uh, uh, giving you the right uh, advice and uh, you need to understand the type of data. And that's why engaging also with the customers and challenging uh, requirements, especially when you start from technical requirement, I feel is important. I know I love that whole bridging the data um, uh, and listening. I mean, it would be great if we had a few more like user persona tools baked into our team collaboration like Slack. So what if we set up user persona characters in Slack um, the, so they look like they're people on our team, but they're really the user personas. And then when we get feedback 
that's relevant for each of those, then maybe that pops up and they almost insert themselves into our conversation, into our team conversations, yeah. representing that user persona. And there, what what sort of tools could we use to keep this creative and like keep bringing us back to the um, to this idea of like listening better? That's right. That's right. I think, uh, again, in, including uh, customers from the beginning, it's extremely important. And nowadays it's easier. Uh, again, I don't want to mention uh, things that we all know, DevOps, Agile, but uh, the basic principle are, 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 are things like that, no? um, uh, rapid feedback and, and try to consider the customer as soon as right. possible. Pipeline. We've got, we do have a question Ari Aurelian has asked, when you say fail fast to limit important costs, do you, do you have an average time limit in a project or is it random depending on some elements? Well, uh, um, there is no, uh, let's say, an average uh, time limit, but uh, you can probably look at uh, what startups uh, are doing in, uh, in, uh, in, in general. And uh, sometimes uh, startups, uh, again, probably their fail fast is even more important because there are a large investment and uh, that they need to be satisfied at a certain point. And uh, so looking at some statistics, you can find an average time in which you should fail fast. Usually, I mean, again, uh, I don't want to quote uh, some strange things, but it, 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 it occurred to me that sometimes it has to be really a, a short term. But uh, again, uh, fail fast, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a way to, to, to try to basically experiment more also in the initial phase because sometimes the cost of changes increase over time. So uh, in my opinion, you should fail perhaps in, in the first months, <laughs> you know, no, no, not going more than, than one month like, uh, in terms of fa failure. But nowadays, uh, uh, of course, this can change depending on the maturity of your of your enterprise, the maturity of your team, and also the understanding uh, of the of the overall uh, product that you are pushing out. So yeah, it depends a little bit. Well, how does it align with, or can it align with your iter iteration cycles? Like if you've got sprints of a certain length, could you almost want to see yourself fail or or get that feedback? within the next iteration or? Yes, uh, again, uh, the sprints and uh, agile methodologies are uh, working uh, for for more uh, most of the the teams probably. But again, there are also teams that sometimes they don't fit into agile. So yeah. I think that the important things I'm I'm no I don't want to favor one method uh, instead yeah. of another yeah. because of course it's then uh, every every everything needs to be put in in context and scope. But I I believe uh, we we really need to to have this short loop uh, uh, really fast as I also mentioned like cycle faster as much mm. as you can, but mainly really listen to your customer. Because even if you have a, a little bit longer loop than usual, but your customer is embedded in your kind of proposition, the feedback is going to be the right one straight from the beginning. So oh, you cool. have less uh, uh, cost of failure. Okay, cool. I mean, and that was great. I think um, also just like <clears throat> the principles you suggest are applicable regardless of your methodologies that you're using and the um uh the your current tech stack and everything like that okay thanks um i'll ask i'll invite you to leave the stage now but thanks nicola you're right. goodbye all. <clears throat>